Well, I know for a lot of us, man, this is the first time we've had a chance to see you since your, your family had to go through what it did. Talk to us, I just kind of where you're at, man, and, 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 and how you get back to some sense of normalcy in your life. Um, we're taking it day by day. Um, it's a process. I mean, the process is still uh, being tried through the judicial systems. Um, so we're just trying to stay together. Um, that's all we really can do. Um, we're focusing on April 11th, and that's what, you know, is keeping us excited and motivated for the next day, honestly. Um, you know, me doing my job and just trying to be there for them is, is all I'm trying to do, so. Was it a difficult decision for you to, to, to say, that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm ready, let's, let's get back to work? At first it was. I struggled with it a little bit because I didn't want to take any attention away from her. Um, but, you know, she, she tells me all the time, Daddy, it's okay, so. I'm, I'm ready to get back to work. That's awesome. But the fight itself, man, I mean, this is a, uh, this is a big name, some big yeah. opportunity for you. Um, where, where, where are you feeling about that as far as your professional career goes? Pump, man. Um, I feel like um, it's where I'm supposed to be, you know, as far as my professional career goes. Um, I'm excited to get in there and test myself against Overeem. Um, I looked up to him. I watched him fight before I ever put a pair of gloves on. So it's dope to get a chance to go in there and test my medal against him. Um, I feel like it's a fight I can win. I know I'm going to win it. Um, and I got other forces helping me, so it's gonna be fun, April 11th. It's interesting because I know what a fight fan you are, man. So, like, is it gonna be like a little bit weird, like stepping in there and going, "There's this <sighs> icon of the sport on the other side"? I did that already with Fabricio, so it's like I had that moment with Fabricio. Now I feel like I belong here. Like he's just another guy to me, honestly. You know, realistically, I know what he's done in the sport, but it's my time. It's my turn to go do what I gotta do. Um, and I appreciate him for giving me an opportunity to come back and, and keep the same fight. And, you know, he's reached out to me numerous times throughout the situation. So I, I got nothing but respect for Overeem. What did you make of the fight between Overeem and Jair Zinho uh, in DC? Um, I just felt like, man, you know, that wouldn't happen if I was in there, honestly. You know what I mean? I feel like I present him a lot of different challenges. Um, and it would have it would have went down a lot different. Well, during this hard time for you, did you feel the love from the MMA community, the fans, the media, people like that? Oh, man, it's been unbelievable. Um, you know, it's been something that I can't really put into words. Um, just everybody, everybody from the media to the UFC to just people around the sport that are fans of the sport. They have really wrapped their arms around my family and um, I'm grateful for it. And that's that was a part of what played into me wanting to come back because I want to say thank you to everybody and show them that, you know, we're still we're still focused and we're, we're going to make it happen, man. Like, I know that's what my daughter would want. You know, she she sacrificed a lot for me to be here. So I'm going to keep pushing for her. Absolutely. And it's not the way you want to get more fans, but it seems like it has built mm -hmm. like an exponential higher fan base for you. How could you feel about that? Oh, it's amazing to see the support. You know, of course, like like you said, it's not some kind of, you know, you don't look for that, but um, we're going to make the most of it. I know my daughter would be happy and she's proud. She's smiling down. She wants me to keep going and uh, be happy because she knows how much I love this sport. So. Um, well, I had multiple conversations with him before that. Um, but the move to come back was pretty, you know, just simple as, hey, late March, early April. And he said, all right, you know what I mean? Because we kind of talked before that. He he was more concerned about me as a human. And um, that was just something that I just admired about him, how he stepped in and he was there from the word go. So um, coming back, I just wanted to make sure I was really ready to do it. Um, I had people around me. My support system is super, super, super strong. So um, we knew we'd be ready, so. Go get it, baby. That's what she said. So that's what I'm gonna do. There's still a push for some legal change, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We just um Anaya's law just passed the judicial system in Alabama. It's going to the Senate. Um, it's moving at a rate I've never seen. Uh, you know, for a law. Um, it's it, the both parties have come together. There there was a unanimous vote for it, um, which was amazing. So um, we're making headway on that end, and I think that's a part of the process of healing for us, you know, is making sure we keep her name relevant and make sure people, she didn't pass away in vain. And um, so that's the first step. You guys have a law that can maybe go nationwide? Or yeah, at some point I believe it could because it's going to um, give judges the discretion to deny bond. And I think with my daughter's case, I can't say a lot about it because there is a gag order, but um, the, you know, 
perpetrator or whatever you want to call him, um, he had a, a lengthy rap sheet, and a lot of people feel like he shouldn't have been on the streets, um, and it could happen to anybody if that's the case. So we're trying to enact something that will protect everybody. So hopefully it'll go national. You look great. You look great. How uh, soon will you be able to get back into full-time full -time training? Um, yeah, I'll be honest, in January we started back working um, as a way to kind of distract myself. Um, my coach Chris has been there with me from day one. Um, and he was mainly like, hey, you know, you come back when you're ready. But I told him, I said, man, I need you guys. He's like, well, we're here, come back. So I started working in January, not every day like I'm doing now, but like gradually, probably three, four days a week. We go in, we train, we do different things. And then it just kind of morphed into a feeling of like, man, I need to get back on the, you know what I mean? On the scene. And I, I think that's what my daughter would really, really, really want, so. Yeah, I mean, I just, I commend you for being able to just get Thank up you. and face the day each and every day. Thank you. Uh, we, we spoke with DC a few days ago, and I didn't get a chance to ask him, has he, did he ever reach out to you? Because he obviously um, I, I didn't really speak to him personally, but I mean, I, he sent his condolences via social media and things like that. Um, I never heard from him personally, though. What, was there ever a time at all where you just said, you know, maybe I can't? Come back. I mean, I yeah, that, yeah, definitely. Um, there was points where I felt like even thinking about fighting was, you know, taken away from her. I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be about solely my daughter. And I just felt like fighting was the last thing on my mind. I took a real big back step away from the sport. I think the first fight I watched was the December 7th fight over Reem and Rosenstruck. Um, and that was more so to just absorb the energy that the UFC put into keeping my daughter's name alive. You know, I wanted to say, you know, I got a chance to witness it and see it. And I was moved by it. My wife was moved by it, my whole family. Um, so yeah, that was kind of what, you know, I was doing at that time. The word normalcy was used uh, when you, like, could you ever get back to normalcy? For those of you who, us who haven't experienced this, could you, is normalcy ever possible? No, nah, as like far this? as um, normalcy meaning, uh, you know, fighting or? Just in life. Life, no. I mean, you you lose a child, there's never, I will never be the same. But um, I've tried to sum it up in this way. That I had two options. Um, I could go south or I can go north, and I chose to go north because I know that that's what she would want. That's the type of person she was. She was my guiding light, you know what I mean? She was my strength. And if I fall off, if I, you know, don't ever fight again, I think she'd be upset about it because she sacrificed so much. My wife sacrificed so much. My other kids sacrificed so much for me to even get to the point of having a main event, to fight an idol, you know what I mean? So I, I would never stop, you know, just because of, what I'm going through, I think it's motivating me, it's propelling me to, to be great. So I'm ready. Sometimes when bounces fall through, they never come back. Well, obviously, you got more you get more happy and you need that sort of situation. Super, super excited about it. I mean, um, like, honestly, I feel like I, I'm ready to fight anybody in the division. I've been saying that since day one, but I'm, I'm glad that Overeem accepted the fight. Um, I'm grateful, to be honest, because um, some guys said they didn't want to fight me ever because of the situation and I respected that you know but it was at the same time it's business it's my job um and I, I thank Overeem for coming back and taking the time to run it back with me well not run it back but give me opportunity to, to do what I gotta do yeah oh man it's, the support for this one I think is gonna be bigger than I've ever had um you know my family's traveling my family always travels but I got friends and I got a lot of people coming, you know, just to support in general. So it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. She was at my last fight in San Antonio, actually, um, which was powerful. Just her being there, you know what I mean, was, I mean, I wanted 12 seconds. You know what I mean? So, like, my mindset was on a whole different plane then because my baby girl was actually in the crowd. I carry her with me every day, and going through this, I think April 11 is going to be magical. Naturally, the focus is on everything that's happened with this tragedy. But when you look towards the end of this year, you look towards the things that you want to accomplish with activism in your career, what do you think that people will be talking about a year from now? Um, I mean, at the end of the year, I feel like, you know, anything that's promoting awareness toward her is what I'm about. Um, fighting is something that I do. I love it, but um, my mission has always been to provide for my kids, be a light for my kids, and you know, it's taking on a new meaning now, especially with her um, situation. So at the end of the year, I'm looking at, you know, 
our, our, our nonprofits and things like that. Like fighting is, is important. I want to be a champion still, don't get me twisted, because that's what she wants. But um, we're going to see where, you know, we're just taking it, like I said, day by day. So I really can't speak honestly to where I think it's going to be. But.